That's the first time. I have a... It's tap. I can tap and not have to click. I like click. You like click. It's better. What's up, everybody? This is Dylan and Leslie with uh, Dylan Talks Tone live stream. We do this every Thursday. Where we usually... I don't always use a koozie, <laughs> but when I do, I use the flip side music koozie that I got like two years ago. I did not get it this time. No, I got it the first time when I first met Ike. Because this is the third hour of Primetime Guitar, starting with Ike at Flipside Music. And then uh, Texas Toast Guitars. Make sure you check out their channel as well. And then us. You saw the thumbnail. Um, I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little heads up. The best guitar ever thumbnail was not actually the guitar that we're going to talk about because I didn't have the guitar we're going to talk about. So a picture that I took of my PRS the other day, I just photoshopped it out and made like a blob. So, so you, you would said it was the best guitar ever before you saw said guitar. I mean, I built it. Did you though? I did a, some. I did some of it. I did some of it. I didn't do all of it. But the cool part is, what makes this the best guitar ever is that you are going to build it. Not me. Not Matt. But you. And so, we're going to talk about... I almost banned somebody on accident. I oh. saved it. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about this guitar because um, we're going to jump right into this. The thumbnail is... So, here's the deal. Texas Toast Guitars in Denver, Colorado, yes, I know it's confusing, just get over it, is um, a guitar company, but they, and they build great guitars, and they use our pickups in some of those guitars. They're really cool dudes. They got a great YouTube channel. Uh, they teach you about some stuff. I like them because they're no BS folks, just like me, and um, they do these classes where you can show up and build a guitar from scratch. We are collaborating with them on a guitar. And it just showed up literally minutes before this live stream. Almost screwed up my entire thing because UPS was late. But here it is. So this is uh, actually a guitar that I designed a few years ago. I'm trying to make sure that we can get it all in mostly in there so this is a guitar that I designed a few years ago and the idea with this guitar was I think when we first released the first video on it it was hmm, I kind of did it to make people mad really because I don't while I respect tradition I also am pretty irreverent to it because I think you can do whatever you want when you have a guitar company or when you play guitar like you can play whatever you want and do whatever you want so that's what this is this is a 25 and a half inch scale uh basically it's a telly in a les paul jr shape pretty much however one of the things we added in the v2 version that just happened a few months ago is the little prs scoop right down here so now we have all of the major brands represented but not in one body. The cool part about this guitar is when you go to this class in September, there is a link to it in the description. You will show up on Monday. You will not have to buy anything. You will not have to bring anything except yourself. And you will be able to show up and build this very nice Swamp Ash body. Uh, I mean, if you don't want a pick guard you don't have to have a pick guard or you could put a pick guard on it um steve from maximum guitar works his really cool super sweet knobs um there is a choice between a tele bridge pickup or you can put a p90 here and then provided on the availability uh based on availability it's going to be a hip shot, hip shot bridge here um instead of the clues on that we have on this one um a P90 in the neck, that's mandatory. And then this very cool neck that is built um, 
not quite built, sort of. It's kind of cut out to your spec, or to the to this spec, uh, by Steve at Maximum Guitars. And I don't, you can't see probably in this video, but these are uh, hemispherical fret ends. Uh, man, they are so nice too. Hemispherical frets mean that they're like got a dome on the end of them, and these are blind fret slots, which means there's no little line underneath the fret. So it's almost like your your neck is bound. Um, so you will be able to super chat. Yeah. I love so. This is a super chat from Van Shank Guitars, and he is acknowledging the common discussion right now. Forget the guitar for a minute. We need to see Dylan's shorts. Oh, LOL. For real. They're awesome. They are not boxers. They have no. pockets. They're yeah, real they have shorts. pockets. See? They can yeah. carry a knife in them and everything. They are real shorts. Yeah. They're super cool. I love my North shorts. North Face. They come in all yeah. kind of fun colors. North Face shorts. I have blue, orange. I wore orange last week. Yep. Blue, orange, and then these crazy red and white and ones. And the red ones go really nicely with this like with, age shirt that he made. The Dylan um, Pickups Santa Cruz ripoff shirt. Anyway, so he yeah. likes to color coordinate. <clears throat> he likes fun colors. Heck I'm yes. I'm sorry if you don't like your legs. Yeah, I, I, I tell people all the time, I'm not responsible for your lack of confidence in your physique. Uh, I have plenty of confidence in mine. Somebody what? said, can you get that shorts pattern in a finish? <laughs> I'm sure if we could find the cloth, you could go to a cloth top class and do that. Um, Thanks, Ivan. Thank you, Ivan, for the super chat and for making light of that whole thing. I think it's funny. Um, hip shot tuners. Brian said, what a beauty. And the guitar ain't bad, too. Right? <laughs> he was talking about my legs or the guitar. It says, designed by Dylan on the back of the peg head. Ben said something about the guitar. I get that. That's a little slow. Um, and then when you come to the class, your name is going to be engraved on the back of the guitar that you build, which is pretty cool. Um, no, so I really think this thing is very cool. Uh, no fender cheapy plate back here. Proper ferrules. Um, this is a roasted maple neck with a Wenge fretboard. So... The reason I'm going through all this, the specs on this, and I know they did a reveal on Texas Toast Guitars, but um, the reason I'm going through it is because this is, if I was going to build, oh, it's got the super sweet spoke wheel truss rod. There's carbon fiber reinforcement in the neck. If I was going to spec this model, to build and sell like on my website or to play myself because I want one of these. In fact, this, that's why I have this one. Um, this is the way I would spec it at the price point of the class. You have the potential to build. And I love the way that Matt and Chris structure it so that there is less chance for failure. Like you leave with a really good instrument, honestly, kind of a properly boutique instrument. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not, this is not a parts caster. This is, uh, this guitar would cost more than what this class costs. Mm -hmm. I, if I sold this guitar right now on our website, it would cost more than what this class costs. On top of that, you're getting to use the pin router. You're getting to use the deadhead sand sander some. You're getting to use, um, like proper grown up tools to do something from scratch. Remember that you start with a block of wood. This is not showing up and putting parts together. The biggest thing I almost forgot to mention, and the reason I'm even involved in it, is because one of the days, you're gonna wind your own pickups. So you're gonna build this thing from tip to tail. And I'm gonna show you how to wind a P90 and a Tele pickup. And they're gonna sound good. Every person, we've had 17 people go through these pickup winding classes so far. Every person left with a pickup that worked. And every person actually, so far, so don't break my streak, have built a pickup that works the first time. 
Like, you didn't have to do it over a bunch of times to get it right. Mm -hmm. And they sounded great. These guitars that people built last summer, or, or this spring, um, and built their own pickups, they sounded great. So, um, this is no joke. This is going to be a killer, killer instrument. Uh, when you're done with it. So there's a link to it in the description. You can check it out. Please go sign up for it. You get to hang out all week uh, with really cool people. Join a very cool community that Matt is putting together. Um, and you leave with this. And I just can, I think it's awesome. Can you hold it for a second I sure while can. we yeah. answer we got some a few questions that came in specific to this? Yep. Haas wants to know what is the neck radius? Uh, the neck radius is 10 inches. Yep. And Sammy what says, is the heel contoured? The heel is not contoured. Um, no. And while you're there, mm -hmm. um, somebody says, are the neck screws going into inserts? I believe they are, yes. I can't remember, but he said he was going to do that. Sammy what can these be left-handed? Yes, because you're going to build it. So when you show up there, you can just say, hey, I'm left-handed. Um, actually, let me revise that. When you put your deposit in, we will need to know that you are left-handed. Because there's a couple pieces, like the neck, that would need to be done left-handed. Um, and the bridge, like if you have a telly, to get a lefty bridge. Super chat. Do have a super chat from Doc. Thank you for the super chat. He says the best part of building that guitar will be the community of builders around you when you do it. It's just yes. amazing. It is so fun. Yeah. I'm, I don't even build anything and I like being there when they're just doing hanging it. out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so cool. Um, oh, you're going to get strings. You know? I just think it's cool that you're going to be able to wind your own pickups, put them in a guitar, and then on by Friday, you'll be able to play it and leave with it. It's, you know, I don't know. We went through a few different variations of stuff to make sure. Oh, yeah. Lumen Lay Side Dots. Oh, yeah. It glows in the dark. There's the features just keep on coming. I can't, I cannot tell you, like, this is not just some bunch of cheap parts that you get to put together. Like, this is a proper instrument. Um, I would put this up, this guitar right here, in my hands right now, I would put this up against any kind of, you know, Sir or anything like that. I mean, I know the finish is their DTF finish, which stands for down to feel, because you just have to feel it. Um, <laughs> what does it actually say? Durable thin finish. Thank you. Yeah. And you'll be able to pick colors uh, within reason. There isn't going to be any wacky, like, you know, crazy bursts or none of that stuff. You, you know, you got to stay. It's There is a time frame to doing all of this. Um, but we've been there for some of the other classes that they've done where they people have gotten to pick colors. And the choices are a lot. There's a lot of choices. So, so. somebody was asking, not... The ferrules. Are the screws direct in the wood or are there steel inserts? Yeah, they, that's I knew what you were asking. Oh. Yes. Well, somebody was. Yes. Okay. Yep. Cool. That is the related things. Do you want to take the question that you had or what do you want to do yeah. next? Yeah, let's do that. Let's throw this thing back. And as you have questions, if you have questions at all, Related to this or anything, get in the comments, mm -hmm. use a super chat or not. We'll try to catch them. Um, but I just wanted, I had to just jump right into that thing. And I know it took a few minutes to go through it, but um, I really wanted to dive into the value of the experience and also the instrument itself because it's just, it's not. I don't know. I'm surprised by it. I mean, I designed the thing, but and I actually worked with Matt and Steve at Maximum Guitars. We went out there, 
like to design the neck and talk about the features and what what materials so we were going to use. Lots of hours in this. Yeah, there. I mean, this was we started this at the, in the middle of May and it just came to fruition this week. So mm -hmm. it's been you know weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of back and forth and details and do we change this? Should we change that? Do you think students would like to learn how to do X Y Z? Um, because it's not just about the guitar itself. It's about the experience while you're there. So thinking about, you know, are they going to want to learn to do this kind of fretwork? Are they going to want to paint it themselves? Are they going to want to, you know, learn how to use these types of tuners? And um, are they going to want to learn how to final shape the neck? Or are they going to want to just have a neck that's already done? Are they All those things, like going into all of that stuff, and then the pickup stuff, like the design of the guitar, I wanted a P90 in the neck and a Tele Bridge pickup for sure because that's the way I designed this guitar. But it was no coincidence to say, well, let's use that because then you get to learn how to make a Tele pickup and a P90, which are wildly different. Mm -hmm. So you get a good knowledge of how pickups are made and two different styles. Um, yeah, it was just a lot of thought that went into it. It was, uh, yeah. So anyway, cool. Yeah. So come see us in September. Yeah, for sure. There's a link to the classes in the description. All um, right. Yeah. You want to take the... Let's take this one question that did come in. Yeah, we didn't have very many questions this is week. Is this so. from Patreon? Yes, it is. All right. Shane, last week you mentioned about quality control issues with Indonesian fenders. Mm -hmm. Should we be wary with all mm -hmm. guitars coming out of the Indonesian cork factory was thinking of ordering an Indonesian Ibanez. So, um, I don't think you should be wary at all. Um, just because, so first of all, I don't know that they're made in the cork factory. Number one, even if they were within Let's take, for example, the Cork Factory, because I have two guitars. Well, I've had a couple of guitars that came from there. Uh, no, I have two. I've had more. Just because it comes from the Cork Factory doesn't mean it's going to be the same quality. Each brand, so PRS, for example, where they make the Silver Skies, it, they're made by Cork. They go down there and establish how the guitars are going to look and what the quality level of that guitar is going to be. It is a, it is on the brand, whoever it is, whether it's Paul Reed Smith or Fender or Kramer or Schechter or whomever it is to go down there and say, this is the way we want it. And we're not taking anything less than this. I don't believe that Fender is doing a very good job of that right now. Um, I have an Indonesian Kramer up there. It came perfect. Not one thing wrong with it. Not one setup thing, not one fret, not one binding thing. And it's a Gibson product. And everybody whines about Gibson all the time. But not one thing was wrong with it. Not one thing at all. Um, the PRS Silver Sky SE that came from the Court Factory had... There was one little thing that I fixed on it, and I can't remember what it is. And the Schecter, Machine Gun Kelly, came from Indonesia. That guitar was perfect. It had that little, we made the video about um, the little plinky part and the nut that I just cleaned out with a guitar string. Um, but a far cry from any Squire that I've seen for the last six or eight months. We've bought a few. Um, and they're terrible. They're terrible. So I don't know why. I don't know why that's something that Fender has to fix, but I would not be scared of all guitars coming from there. Yeah. You have a topic you want to talk about or you want to just do a Q and A? This was the biggest thing I do. There is one more thing I want to talk about, um, because it keeps coming up. And then it came up in um, the Texas Toast live stream. Okay. Um, and that is the whole intellectual property thing. Because there seems to be, again, another round of people 
in the comments and stuff who don't really understand it because well first of all they give me crap for playing a silver sky because i give so much crap to companies that don't respect intellectual property so i wanted to talk about that for a second <clears throat> because and then it came up in the in the in the texas toast thing i have a video on this channel with a man named ron beanstalk that is his name. He is the lawyer in capital T, like the, the lawyer. <laughs> I don't mean like some lawyer who knows about this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, the lawyer. He is Larry DeMarzio's lawyer. He is, well, I can call him whenever I want. And I've asked him a bunch of stuff. Hey, should I do this? Can I do this? No, don't do that. No, that's a waste of time. Super nice guy. Super nice guy. I could call him right now and he would call me right back. Like he is, we really like him. And he's Larry DiMarzio's lawyer. He's the reason I can't make double cream humbuckers, right? He is the reason why you can make a Telecaster or a Fender a Stratocaster shape and nobody cares. Um, so... People have been giving me a hard time for not respecting trademarks because I play a Silver Sky. But here's the thing. A Silver Sky is loosely based on a Stratocaster, but Ron Beanstalk sued Fender and said, you did not defend those shapes, the trademarks on those shapes. Actually, you didn't even have trademarks on those shapes for many, many, many years, and then you tried to get them. So here's how this works. So basically, there are no trademarks on a, a Strat and a Fender shape. So here's how this works. If I come out with a guitar shape, doesn't matter what shape it is, I go to the US Patent and Trademark Office, actually I don't, I call Ron and I say, hey Ron, I have a new shape that I need to trademark. He takes care of it for me and I pay him some money and then it is registered with the trademark and patent office. Um, and then it is my job or my lawyer's job. My, it's my job to throw some Google terms in every once in a while and see if anybody's trying to rip my shape off. If somebody's trying to rip my shape off, I got to call, call up my lawyer and be like, hey, you got to go after those guys and get them to stop making that shape. If I let that fly, and let's say years go by, let's say 10, 15 years go by, and I don't call my lawyer and say, hey, tell those people to stop making that shape. You can let that go to a point where you lose your brand identity, which is what happened to Fender. They never trademarked it. They never defended it. So then there's just strats and tellies everywhere and they can't defend it anymore. Gibson, though they didn't do it perfectly, did it better than Fender. And that's why they can defend shapes like the Modern, the SG, the 335, the V, and the Les Paul. So now you're asking, okay, wait a minute. How come I can get a Chinese Les Paul? This is because not every country has IP laws mainly China, and they just rip everything off. But that doesn't make it right. So that's just a little that's just a little thing about that. It's just interesting. Super chat from Thomas Tourville. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you for the super chat. Sorry, I almost missed it. Um, hi, Dylan and Leslie. Love the guitar surprise. It's really super nice. Awesome. It is. Super and nice. you have another package coming to you. He the... already said he got it, I'm pretty sure. I think I saw and grabbed a comment from him earlier. Pickguard will be here Saturday. Thank you. Okay, good. Yeah, we were having a... It got goofed up in tracking or something. So we were trying, awesome. trying to sort that out earlier this week. Cool. I just wanted to mention that because people... And it, I will say that is one of the most misinformed and bad information subjects on the internet. But I'll tell I'm you... interrupt you again. Go ahead. Timothy Potter, thank you for the super chat. Thanks, he Timothy. says, did you dream this guitar design because it sounds like a dream guitar? Nice work, guys. Thanks, man. 
Um, no. I'll tell you exactly where it came from. I love Les Paul Juniors. Love them. I like how they feel, like, hang, like, ergonomically. And I like Fender scale, though. I'm a 25 and a half inch guy. If I have the choice, 25 and a half inch. This is a weird thing. Everybody thinks they know me as a telly guy. I never played tellies until eight years ago. For the last 30 something years. And he was resistant then. And I was resistant <laughs> then. I, for the last 30 something years, I've been a Strat guy. I've had a Strat for almost 40 years. And and it's, yeah, I've had it for 35 years, I think. And it's, um, it's, it's a fantastic guitar. I mean, I love them. And I thought, tellies are stupid. They're just boards with a neck on them. There's like a flat board with a neck on it. I obviously feel differently now and I love them, but it's never been my first love. And so the Les Paul Jr. thing though, so to, to meld all that together um, was kind of the, the idea. Awesome. Thank yeah. you for the question and the super chat, Timothy. You want to ask, answer some more questions? Yeah, let's do it. I like those red question marks. Who's ever doing that? You're yeah, on to something. That's Casey Lee. They've actually asked the same question twice. Um, so we do grab them. Um, Super Chats take precedence. Patreon took precedence. And then when I pull them, they just dump in a random order a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. But I know you've submitted it twice, so we're going to start with Casey Lee's question. Would you rate a Wilkinson Bridges for us? Oh, they're great. Yes. Um, Wilkinson, I, Wilkinson pickups are kind of garbage. And Wilkinson tuners are kind of garbage. But those bridges are pretty good. So, like, if we were to put... A Wilkinson bridge that's compensated on a telly. I think they're fantastic. And um, Wilkinson is also used by Reverend. And they have a really nice um, double action tremolo. Like a, It looks sort of like a Floyd, but it's not. And it floats. They put them on their jets and stuff. Great tremolos. Really good tremolos. Cool. Yeah, I like them a lot. Mark Stanton. Hey, Dylan. I got the pickups, and I needed to buy new knobs and a control plate. Now I have all the parts. The pickups are installed, and now I just have to figure out the wiring. Yeah, we're... So when you get... Um, I, I'm... I haven't talked to you about this, but I'm really tossing around stocking a few knob choices and adding it as an add-on option because it's a common need for it, people it, well because if they have a squire they use the seven millimeter baby knobs mm -hmm. the baby pots in there and we're putting like proper quarter inch on there so then they have and then they're like forced knobs. to so i'm kind oh. of thinking about and for a while we stopped doing it because i didn't want to stock the parts but i feel like we're trying to take things to the next level. We're trying to add better service. We're trying to make Is that for pick better products. Um, no, for Telecasters too. So like this is my Telecaster control plate that I build all of your tro control plates on. So I'm saying it's not just pickups. You're saying when they buy kits. I'm saying when they buy, when, kits when they buy these and pick guards. Okay. Like the strap pick guards, maybe we should have white knobs and black knobs like just two choices just like a drop down like included mm -hmm. in the package i think so because and then and then for these we should go back to probably stocking these plates as so that because these holes are too small so now you either have to drill them out or get bigger ones so i'm kind of tossing around doing that it might cost a few bucks more um you know it might add ten dollars to it or something or fifteen dollars to it but then package. if they have everything yeah. and they don't have to ship from three different places and whatever so we're thinking about doing that. I, I don't know how much it's going to cost extra, but um, yeah. And just to add more value, you know, we're it's, I want to do that. So we're, we're tossing that around or I am. Yeah, you I are now, you it. are now too. <laughs> IBJI says, what happens before Dylan picks up, pick up, Dylan drops something. I just had to say that. that That's funny. really funny. I do um, that often. 
Oh, I have to read these in order. Okay. Um, Thomas Dennett says, big fan of you, Dylan, sent your early viral vid when you wired up a wooden fence with a pickup. Thanks, dude. And then Casey Lee says, yeah, man, that was a gasser. After that, I made a Telecaster out of a piece of wood from a tree that fell in my mom's backyard. Turned out pretty good for my first build. Dude, that's so cool. Those are my favorite kind of messages when it gives somebody an idea and they're like, oh, I'm going to go try something crazy too. We've been getting a lot of like, in the comments, we've been getting a lot of like, I don't know why you did that. And I'm like, I'll tell you why. Because you might be a why guy and I'm a why not guy and I'm going to try it. <laughs> I want to see what happens. Speaking of the comments, this is something you know about because mm -hmm. this is your idea. We're tossing around adding another live stream during the week. I might try it a couple times a month. If it does good, we might go to every week. Probably on Tuesdays. Sometime right around the end of work. Um, probably just me. We're going to keep doing the Thursday thing with both of us because this is really fun. Uh, and it's not going to necessarily be live news, but I am going to talk about some stuff that's going on. Um... You know, like Pantera touring, but not really because it's fake. And, you know, some stuff like that. Little, my opinion might get in there a little bit. I'm just saying it might. Um, but it's going to be more fun. I, I want to have fun with it. I want to, you know. Do you still have the P.O. box listed in the comments? It should be. Okay. You got somebody wanting to send us something cool? Um, Yeah, hang on. Let me send this. So Brad Guitar Miller says, Dylan, I would like to send you one of the angled tele-control plates I make. What address? And I just told him he could either shoot a message Ooh. to the contact form or grab the P.O. box in the comments. He makes them. That's what he says. Mm. I am not a fan of those, but you would be surprised. You probably aren't surprised because you're making them. How many people get in the comments and want those? So, and say, oh, you should do that. The two, when we do telly stuff, the two biggest things that people say are like, you should flip the controls around, which I cannot stand. So I personally don't do it on my own guitars and angled switches, which I also cannot stand. So I don't do it on my own guitars, but I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I personally don't like it. Um, on a telly, it makes me roll the volume down while I'm playing, and I so I don't like that. Got a super chat from Mojo. Thank you for the Thanks, super Mojo. chat. And that's a cool name. Um, your best pickup set for my 83 Japanese E-Series Squire Strat. What? I have an 85 E-Series. It's not a Squire, though. It's a Japanese Fender. Um, best pickup set. Classic Fives. Ooh. Get them. They'll be awesome. Get them. That's what I have in mind. Actually, I have the very first prototype set of the Classic yep. 5 in mind. Still there. Still there. All right. You <clears throat> ready for mm -hmm. more? Let's do it. I really like this question from William Catone. He says, how did you get started doing what you do? What was your drive? Um... So this is my my ninth business. Uh, I've always had my own business. So first of all, there's a couple things that drive me. One is I will never have a boss if I can help it. I want to be in control of my family's future and how much time we spend together and what we do and stuff outside of work, like work-life balance and what we do together. So I think that's really important. So I don't want to have a boss that I'm slaving for somebody else. Two, um, the thing that makes me go is knowing that most of you have to work and you do have a boss. And on a Tuesday, when work is kind of sucking, you find a YouTube channel and you're like, I'm going to watch some guitar stuff while my boss isn't looking at work. And then I'm going to order some pickups. And it's going to make my weekend better. 
it's going to make my guitar playing more fun. So if I can make your guitar playing more fun, if you only have so much money to spend on your guitar this month, you only have so much time to spend playing guitar this month, I want to make sure with the videos and with the products that we make that that time and that money is spent better um, and more effectively and not wasted. And even when I was in the dirt bike business before, because I was in the power sports industry before designing dirt bike parts, that was the same thing. It was just like, you only have a few hours a week to ride. We want to make sure it's the best it can be. And that's, um, but that was before YouTube. And so once YouTube started, um, but that's what drives me. And so when somebody says, I watched one of your videos, however many years ago, and I cut a tree down in my backyard and I built a guitar because of it, like we just had a few minutes ago, that's like, that's as good as somebody ordering pickups. I, I just think it's so cool. So that's what drives me. It is for sure. And people, it's funny because people will get in the comments and be like, you know, think it's money based, but I don't mean we have to pay the bills, but it's fun is we need to, we need to have fun and smile a lot. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in a business that can make people f have more fun and smile more, I'm down. All right. Kelly Steelfield. Completely off topic question. <laughs> if you My were shorts building shorts are red and white. Mm, oh, okay. If oh. you were building single coils for a semi hollow steel string baritone ukulele, what magnets would you choose? That is a very specific random off topic question. It is. So if it, so a lot of this is going to depend on uh, how much access you have to being able to fabricate stuff. If you have a 3D printer and can make your own bobbins and everything, then you can do basically anything you want and make like a little four string Stratocaster pickup, you know, or if you have a laser or something. If you're more limited in that, um, then you could use like a blade pickup, like get a strat blade pickup and put it in there. And then that way you don't have to worry about string spacing so much. Um, or a Firebird humbucker pickup because it's a little narrower, a little smaller, but it's got a blade in there. Not a mini humbucker, but They're a Firebird. building though, and they asked about magnets specifically. Yeah, and so, well, I know, but that's the... So any of those would be like Alnico 5 stuff. Mm -hmm. But just trying to give you an idea of different formats that you could try. Um, all of those could be done. Alnico 5 is my favorite, um, really. But, yeah, so that's what, I would, that's what I would do. There's a bunch of different ways to go. but Super chat from Mojo. Thank you for the super Thanks, chat. Thanks, Mojo. Can I get the classic five set with the middle pickup reverse round wound reverse polarity? Yes, you can because we do them all like that. And because you answered that, um, somebody also asked, Mikey Newman says, Hey Dylan, do you make a strat set with a middle pickup that isn't reverse wound? If you call me and tell me, or not call me, I will Put it not on your order. I will not answer the phone. Yeah. Put a note on your order and tell me, and I will do it. Because he uh, just said they normally come that way. I will do it however you want. Yep. Um, another super chat. Bud Legit. I thought that said Butt Luigi. It's, I thought it said Bud Light. And it says <laughs> Bud Legit. Bud Legit 88. Thank you for the super chat. Sorry we that, laughed. About. I wonder if that is a Bud Light and a Dale, a Dale Jr. reference. Anyway, go ahead. He's eight, not 88. He was 88 before he was eight. Oh, that's dumb. Bud legit. Anyway. That's pretty awesome. Any thoughts on Friedman guitars? The NoHo 24 in particular? Um, I don't know their model names, but every one of them that I've ever played has been fantastic. They are really, really good. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for the super chat. I know who makes those for him, and you can trust that they're going to be good. Phil Snell, do you ever use treble bleed? If so, any tech details on how you do it and cap and resistor values? 
I do not because I do not. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think my Fiore back there, the blue one, has a treble bleed on it. And it seems fine. I don't like typically how they f sound um, because I think they get a little too thin when you roll the volume down. And I roll the volume down a lot because I don't really use pedals that much. So I don't, because the way they work is it's just a filter that does sort of the opposite of a tone control and it, and it filters out low end as you turn the volume down, basically. The idea is, is that it keeps it from getting muddy when you turn the volume down. However, I like that sweetening effect that happens when the highs start to go away as you lower the volume down. For example, with a Gibson SG Junior and you have a P90 in it and it's super snarl and real mid-range honking on 10 and you turn it down to 7 or 8 and it really sweetens up and gets almost kind of jazzy sounding. I like it that it does that. I, I use that. And so I don't use a treble bleed because it would kill that uh, effect for me. <clears throat> if you did, though, is there a cap and resistor you recommend? I can't remember. You'd have to Google it. There's two different main ones that people use, one for humbuckers and one for single coils. And I, I used to stock them. We used to sell them. But I just, I don't, I can't remember. BC Rich 581 says, Dylan made me a four-way control plate set for a telly a few years ago, and it turned out superb. Oh, awesome. Uh, Mark Fisher, awesome time. Why the single cut LP? I'm currently building a thick SG with trim in Canada. Great stuff. Oh, that's cool. Why the single cut LP? I like it. I just think it's neat. Um, and... So the, this is so funny. There's an irreverence to that, to this body shape, to this guitar that I love. Like that it's just kind of um, poking the bear of all of the big brands. And I think that's kind of fun. That being said, the reason I didn't do a double cut is because I think there's certain shapes that shouldn't be messed with like in a tradition like i'm super traditional about and i want a 59 les paul jr double cut in tv yellow so bad i cannot even tell you so i won't mess with that shape i think it is what it is so that's why i went single cut i'm weird like that uh so bud i don't know if it's bud Liggett or Liggett 88. Anyway, Bud he's, legit. he's saying <laughs> Bud Legit is a to quit. To the <laughs> NoHo 24 is a 2475 scale length 24 fret. Oh, okay. You said you didn't know what it was. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, Box Guitars Rock. Three brass saddles on a telly or not. Can you hear a tone difference? It's my favorite. That's what's on this guitar. That's my favorite. Absolutely. And we have a video about that uh, where we compare the brass to the steel to the graphite to the titanium, I think. And there is an audible difference even on YouTube. And it just depends what you like. Jeffrey Egan, Dylan, is the pickup in your SG mounted on a metal plate or just normal mount? My LP double cut pickup is mounted on a metal plate. Does it shape the field like a telly bridge? No, because they are nickel. Do you have one they are on not a metal plate steel. or not? Uh, and mine is, yeah. Yep. Cool. So dog ear is on a metal plate and soap bar is on is no metal plate. We got super another chat. super chat from Fix Pedal Boards. Thank you for the super chat. I don't know if that's like an action word. Fix Pedal Boards. Um, cool stream. Shazam. Well, thanks, Fix Pedal Boards. Shazam. I appreciate that. It's been some, I mean, superb Shazam. Yeah. People are having fun tonight. I'm digging it. That's what I want. I love that. I love when people are just having fun. Same. All right. Jeff Williams. What's the difference in a P90 and a single 
I'm assuming he means coil and a humbucker. Um, or is V O I L E a word? No, I think that's... okay. What's the difference in a P90, a single something, and a humbucker? Okay, so a humbucker is two single coils put together, wired. That was really forceful. Out of out of phase electrically and magnetically, and they're but it's two single coils wired in series. Um, and basically, that can cancels the hum that can be the 60 cycle or 50 cycle, depending on where you live. Uh, hum that is can be apparent in some single coils. Now, a single coil guitar, a single coil pickup, like this one, or like in a Stratocaster, is just one coil of wires around some magnets. A P90 is... A single coil too, but it has screws that go through the bottom and the magnets sit underneath the pickup instead of being in the middle of the pickup. Just different ways of doing it. And actually, this pickup right here, this P90, was kind of like in Gibson, I think it started in 52, 50, maybe 48, 48, 49, 50, 51. Uh, 48, 49 maybe. Somewhere right in there, Gibson came out with the P90. And it was a single coil with two magnets underneath it. And they're like, you know what? That thing makes too much noise. So we need to make a humbucker so that it bucks the hum. And they're like, well, this has got 10,000 winds of wire on it. Let's just take two smaller coils, put 5,000 on each, wire them out of face reach with each other to buck the hum, and boom, the humbucker was born. In 1957. And boom. Six or seven. Six or seven. So, yeah. All right. Fox Guitars Rock says, funny story. A couple guys in a guitar forum I'm in were bragging how much they love their wide range pickups in their Squires because they sound so much like humbuckers. They do. What's and what's the reason is because they actually are. We just did a video on that that they're just regular humbuckers. Um, now, if you get the ones that are two hundred nineteen dollars, the Tim Shaw ones, those ones are real Kunefe magnets, like the seventy two. But that's why we are redoing because it is wide range season. I forgot to mention that. Um, I love that. That we're, we're reconditioning your wide range pickups from your Squires and your Mexican ones. They are on, the, there's, it's on the website. Um, you order it, then you send your pickup to me, and we recore it all out and fix it all. Um, we're doing that until the end of August. We have a pile of them over here that people have sent in that we're working on the end of next week. So, yeah. Um... Let's see. I don't think I have to scroll grab too far them. back. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Goat said, yes, please. Pro knob on harnesses and pick guards, please. And then he said, I'm behind girl baby and girl cat life. Oh, right on. And actually. And why? Oh, go ahead. No. What were you going to say? I wasn't. Do we have any more questions at this moment? Yeah. You want some? Yeah. Let's do some more. Um, William Catone wants to know why on your guitar is the bridge pickup on an angle? Um, because that's a fender design. So originally it was a, um, pedal steel pickup. And so Leo Fender put it on an angle so that it would kind of compensate for the extreme highs and plinky sounds basically that you would get from. From that, and it kind of stuck. So it also goes into the Stratocaster as well. So the Stratocaster and the Telecaster all both have that kind of angly deal. And humbuckers and P90s don't need to be on an angle. Their frequency response is different to where they don't sound so twangy when they're straight. But a single coil P90, a uh, single coil Strat pickup or Tele pickup kind of does for sure. You ready? Still going? Yep, go ahead. Oh, Daniel Ramirez. Hello. I've followed your tips on guitar setup many times. 
but I can't stop the buzz spreading on my strap. It's an old squire. Is it worth it taking it to a luthier or better to say for a new one? I say to, if you like the guitar, take it to somebody. It probably costs you, well, probably these days, 50 or 75 bucks and leave it with them and have them really set it up. Not guitar center. Like ask your kind of more pro friends that play. Um, you know that maybe they play professionally like hey who in town works on your guitars when you need work done and find out who that guy is in our town we have two guys that that really scott and kevin yep everybody loves scott and kevin both those guys are both friends of ours and if i need something done that i don't feel comfortable with like a fret job or something um or a setup problem that i just can't lick um I call those guys and maybe it cost me 50 or 75 bucks and then I pick it up and it's done. But don't just throw the guitar away. Like if you like the guitar, I don't care if the guitar is worth $200. If it's a Squire Affinity, it doesn't matter. If you like it, get it fixed so you'll play it. And if it's your first guitar, do not sell it. Do not give it away. Do not get rid of it for any reason because you will regret that and make sure that it plays good and it's worth it. <clears throat> I have a huge thing about that. Jeff Williams says, oh, so is a P90 just an overwound single coil with the magnets further away from the strings? Sort of. Yes. Kind of. Sort of kind. Kind of. That's yeah. the official answer. Mm -hmm. Sort of kind. And it, it's a different shape too. It's only a quarter of an inch tall and it's, it's really fat. Thin. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's thin this way and it, that the makes it. The wire make, goes fat. Yeah. Goes wider. Yeah. Where a strap pickup is taller and it's thinner. So, yeah. Gary Aruda says, hello guys. Is that shirt new? This shirt is kind of new. It can be new for you. We've only sold a couple of them actually. So it is sort of new. Dylan talks tone in the gear section. You can get this shirt. Yeah. I'm, I love it. I think it's great. Yeah. Um, when I wear my own shirts. The first, the most two popular are this shirt is stupid because people will literally laugh at me. I'm trying to figure out why someone is laughing at me at the post office. I and love I forget. that. He, his seatbelt, <laughs> his guitar looks Strap. like this S is stupid. And I'm like, mm, we're this missing shirt. this. Yeah. And then this is the other one that people are like, that is such a cool shirt. Yeah. yeah. Only people that know what Santa Cruz is. Oh, and Sasquatch. That one's oh, pretty popular. That's a good one. Yeah. Um... Haas says, did you get a watch in TV yellow? <laughs> I've had this watch a while and everybody gives me a hard time about Doesn't it. Doesn't it make him look younger? Him look younger. That's why he that. wears it. He yeah. says it every time he puts it on. I'm going to be young You're today. too old to wear a watch like that. You're too old to wear your wear a flat brim cap. I'm like, I'm as so old Vox as I'm So Vox Guitars Rock said, that's why he pointed out the forum. He's hoping some of those um, guys send you their pickups. So, oh, yeah. right on. Open season. Heck yeah. Daniel Ramirez says it was his first guitar, a gift actually. Thank you for that. Then it's definitely yeah. worth it. Definitely. Richie B says best humbucker for a GNL Tele neck position. Um, if it's a regular humbucker size GNL, uh, we have a DAF. That's our DAF is really good for that. So it's like a vintage PAF sound. Um, I love them in the neck of a Tele style guitar. Cool. Um, David Mitchell says, I let both my first acoustic and my first electric go. I do regret that a little bit. Yeah, it's hard, man. It's, I, and I get people get in a situation maybe they have to. But when your first guitar is so important. And even if it sucked, the memory of like, I came from this to this in these many years. I was just talking to this guy last night when we were at that singer-songwriter thing. Mm -hmm. And he kept telling me, I just don't feel like I'm good enough to deserve spending X amount of dollars. And I just hate it when people say that kind of stuff. And he's or they, really good. He is. And they he got up in front of people and sang last night. And it doesn't even matter. Like, the, the whole first guitar thing, or is this guitar worth this? Or if it, if it inspires you to play it, mm -hmm. then fix it. If I'm not... As good as Mark Letary, but I bought a Mark Letary signature because I love it and it makes me want to play guitar. 
the guitars that I buy are not because so the ones I buy for me, like I buy lots of guitars for like projects and we build them together on the channel and, you know, swap out pickups and stuff. But the ones that I buy for me to keep are ones that make me feel like playing guitar more. I want to play guitar more. I want to feel better about playing guitar. It's not because I'm good enough. It's just, I just want to smile when I'm playing them. And so that's why I buy them. All right, we have about five more minutes left, so make sure you get your questions in and or your super chat. So awesome. Lee Asbury says, hey, I got an off-the-wall left field question. Is it about a ukulele with steel strings? Y'all can never strings? beat me on the random <laughs> questions, just saying. Um, he says, have you ever played or seen an E.B. Sterling short scale cutlass guitar, 24-inch scale? I have one. I'm trying to decide how to mod it. So I was just looking. Let me make sure that I know what that is before I uh, EV cut this. Before I, I speak out of turn, because I mean, just throw some cool strap pickups in there. Mm. Yeah. How to mod it. But they're short scale. Yeah, they're cool. Fox Guitars Rock said, I inherited an acoustic guitar from my mom, a famous dreadnought. Ooh. Unfortunately, the neck is warped. Suggestions. Mm, that's where, so acoustic stuff, like damage and, um, because I have my first acoustic guitar too, and it got unplayable. And that was one of the ones where I just knew the pro, found out who the pro in town was that dealt with that stuff mm -hmm. and sent it to him and he fixed it for me. Um, and he got it pretty good. I mean, I can play it if I want, um, but it's not perfect. It wasn't a daily player anymore. Yeah, that my grandfather my grandfather gave that to me and has since passed away. And um, I should do a video. Lee said his E B Sterling is shell pink. Oh, pff, yeah, that thing needs new pickups. We could put strap pickups in that classic five pickups and. Uh, some new pots and stuff. Dude, that'd be so cool. Brandon Murphy says, is a tele pickup traditionally more treble forward or mid forward? I've tried a few pickups that I like and I was just curious. I think they're more mid forward, really. And he's asking about the bridge specifically. Yeah, I think I figured he was. I, they're, I think they're more mid forward. That's the way we make ours. Yep. Not super harsh. I don't want it like where it's like where you you play a note and you're like, oh, you know, I don't like that. I like it to be a little smoother on a, the high end. A um, little clarity, but not piercing. And then nice mid-range so it cuts when you put some overdrive on it. Daniel Ramirez says, thank you for this live. It's been real nice. Casey Lee says, my first guitar, Alvarez 5024 Dove Cherry Burst. I bought it when I was 15. I've still got it. I'm 57 now, and I'll leave it to my daughter. See, that's awesome, man. That is awesome. Lee said he's in with your suggestions, so. Okay, good. Two thumbs up. Awesome. No, that's great, man. No, this is fun. It is fun. Yeah, I like it when everybody's in there jamming. and We got a bunch of new uh, faces, I think. I mean, I haven't seen your faces, but... We have unfamiliar names. Yep. Some of the super chats that came through are people I've never, you may have watched every week. So I don't want to take that away from you. Maybe you're here every week and we just don't know. But thank you <laughs> for being here. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for uh, participating. Um, I love that. Sign up to build a guitar. Heck yeah, man. This thing is cool. Oh, and no face dots. Nobody needs dots. At a TM says, Dear Dylan, have you played the new Yamaha Revstar? If so, do you like the pickups or the guitar as a whole? I don't have not spent enough time with it to have an opinion. I think they're really cool. I almost bought one, but then we ended up getting into all this other stuff, and I bought a bunch of other stuff. So. Ha says, Do you want to go to the skate park later and shred? Dude, totally. And shank guitars. Dylan, that short scale guitar would need 50 millimeter pole spacing, right? Maybe. Kenneth Stoker says, new guy here. Hi. Hey, man. Doug Santanello says, good evening. I've been quiet, but been here. Man, 
I'm going back to Jeff Williams said this is his second time here. This is fun. I'm yeah, man. I'm here. glad there's a bunch of new people. I speaking of things that I wish I still had. I had like the original first Pal Peralta Steve Caballero board and I don't have it anymore and I like wish I still had that board. Yeah. But awesome. If you kept everything then you would be a hoarder, so. You didn't have damage cool stuff. You could have kept some stuff. Maybe. I could awesome. have kept some stuff. Thanks, y'all. You guys this has been fun. fun. Uh, we might, well, we will see you on Monday with a demo of this guitar. And we're going to go through a whole, that's what Monday's video is going to be. Is so you get to see this guitar and hear it. Because the reason I didn't play it is because it didn't come set up or anything. Um, so I need to to do that and it literally showed up like 10 minutes before we went live so i pulled it out of the case and brought it in here so um we're gonna get it set up we're gonna play it and we are going to show you uh monday in our monday video and i really think that we're gonna have a live stream uh tuesday late afternoon we're gonna try it and, more to come and see what y'all think of it and then uh, you let me know